So um, let's make sure that we do that as well this week. Okay, next, um, in your other assignment, okay, and that was your response to connecting to Pupuluho and the crucible. So I haven't graded that one yet, but I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys, um, how you guys connected the essay to um, the crucible. Okay, um, let's let's move on um, to our first part. So let's go to our next module for this week. So it's module 1.3, the crucible. Okay, we are going to start. Actually, you know what? I gotta back up because we gotta do the memorable quotes. Okay. What am I? Um, while I'm while I'm getting the memorable quotes to you guys, go ahead and pull up your 30 truths. Okay. Go ahead and pull up your 30 truths and then um, magnify like three truths that you wanna share out with your small group. Okay, we're just gonna do a share out of the memorable quotes and then three of your best truths, Ken. Okay, so make it bigger or highlight it or whatever so that you can quickly share it. Okay, everybody ready? You guys picked your three? Oh, Lindsay. How are we gonna fix this, girl? For real, check click off. Can you try to talk to me? Oh boy, try. Sing, sing a song. Can you sing Hawaii Pony? Okay, chant then. No, okay. What are we gonna do? Can you um, email HPK? Okay, and then maybe maybe you guys can you can work on that as you go along. Okay, if not, then when you sh when it's your turn to share, share your screen. Okay, and then you can kind of just highlight or or copy and paste it into the chat. Yeah, you need to update your Zoom, girl. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get out update or whatever and then come back on? Yeah, hurry up. Okay, all right. So everybody ready? We're gonna share out, okay, um, your memorable quote, have a discussion. So today is not just about like, oh, I'm just gonna share out, this is my quote on page 126 or whatever, 1,200 CC one, um, this is my quote. So and so said it, and this is the important blah blah blah. What I want you guys to do is, after someone shares, extend the conversation. Okay. Extend it, like make a connection, right? Let's try to get more natural with our conversations. Um, first person shares out, then the next person jumps in with more of a smooth transition, like. I'm glad you mentioned that quote because this is the quote that I'm going to share out, something like that, okay? Or because of that event, my event happened, okay? So um, we're going to share, share out our memorable quote. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Maybe somebody else jump in. And then um, once you're done all sharing your memorable quote, then you're going to share out your three, um, your three truths that you selected. Okay, out of the 30. Okay, ready, go. So Journey, it looks like you're going first since you have the lowest page number. Okay. okay. So, so my
from my point, I think. No man. Is Elizabeth talking to Proctor, and she said, "It is a mouse no more. I forbid her go." And she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince and says to me, "I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I am official of the court." So I think the significance of that is that it shows how Mary Warren has changed with the power that she has as as being an official. Where in Act One, she was, I guess, more scared, and now she's more confident. It's like doing things for selfish reasons. And that was important because when it started out, it was mostly this girl doing it because she wanted to accuse other people of witchcraft. Can anybody connect to this as far as like what they see now? Now all they think is, or what Proctor thinks is everyone's out for revenge and everything and trying to get back at everyone for whatever they hate them for. Yeah, so this is um, dramatic irony where we know, right, as the reader, that holy crap these people are being totally deceived right and we know that and we're enraged as the audience members but it's all playing out in front of us right so while well, Jaden um what is your is your mic not working either Tess yeah I can hear oh there, it's fine. Bill. Oh, there we go yeah, we okay can, we can hear you all right. I somehow fixed it. I don't know. Yeah. Just kind of press buttons. Right. <laughs> okay. Good. Are you guys done sharing out? No. Oh, you guys go go in order of the your page number so that it makes sense chronologically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I forgot to give that direction. Okay. I'm leaving you guys just for a bit. Who's next? Happy um, two, food can solve more problems, and three, everyone is equal until proven a bad person. Look, it's my freshman class, but as sophomores. Okay, are you guys all done sharing? Okay, cool. How did you guys like? Act two. I thought it was more interesting than act one. Yeah, act one, we're just kind of getting to know the situation, but then the scandals really come out in act two. Sierra, what about you? Yeah, I thought it was more interesting too. Like, um, just watching the play and then reading it, it like keeps you engaged and yeah there's a lot of drama yeah these girls are nuts these kinds of girls scare me i'm allergic to them okay next go ahead and share your um your 30 truths just three of them each okay it's really cool like you're gonna i wish you guys could just kind of share can you guys share your screens with each other so you guys can kind of see each other's Okay, so that um, you can kind of see, like, we're all kind of in it together. Like, you guys are all real similar in the way you're thinking about big picture things with your community, with your family, with yourselves. Wait, Bill, okay. So the first one that I'll share is number five. It's not about, life is not about taking a breath. It's about the moments that take your breath away. 
Um, I could do six is always put your right shoe on before starting off with the right foot. And number seven is in soccer. When taking a free kick, you always take five steps back and two to the left. Yeah, I think I do that too. Cool. I like your number five because it's part of your, your sense of humor. It really showed your personality. I was like, okay, here we go. Cool, who's next? I can go next. Um, my first one is don't lie or manipulate others. It's not nice. My second one, challenge your brain, see what you can do. And my last one, don't be greedy. Money can really bring out the worst in you. Can you talk about that? Number 19. Um, okay. Um, I feel like when you, like if you have a lot of money and then you're not humble, then you can get greedy and it's like you're not yourself and you're not, I don't know, I guess you're not like selfless and like you're not thinking about others because you have yourself and you have a lot. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it can be a generalization. Um, but it also can be an observation as well, right? And, and also a lesson. Like, I don't know, eventually I hope you guys have beautiful jobs that you wanna go to every day and that you make a ton of money, right? But it's like, you watch the people who around you, are they, are they generous, right? Are they um, smart with their money? What's their attitude like when, if they have money, right? Those are just things that you, you, you notice, right? I mean, trust me, I went to school at HPA. So I went from like regular Waikia High School, right? Like everybody else grew up with working class people. And then I went to school with people at, from HPA, millionaire kids, like unreal, like, what, we don't need our wallets, why? Oh, because we just sign when we go to Mauna Kea Resort. We just sign and we'll just eat over there, it's fine. And we're like, oh my gosh, we wouldn't have enough money to just buy lunch over there when we're in high school, yeah? So, interesting. Money is a very interesting topic. I hope you guys like really study money. It's very interesting, especially if you guys can start saving money so that you can buy like your first property when you're like in your 20s it would be amazing. You set yourself up majorly. Okay, next, Makaya. So my three truths that I want to share was only you can make yourself happy, food can solve most problems, and everyone is equal to proving a bad person. Can you talk about your last one there, everyone is equal until proven a bad person? So like, nobody is better or worse than somebody until like say you do something that proves like, oh, like you should be able to jail or like you're, um, you don't see everybody as equal like you think that oh being gay or being black is a bad thing so then that makes you actually less than somebody because you believe that everybody else is less based on something that's just them that they can't really change about themselves oh, interesting cool. Sophia did you want to talk about one of your truths um I can okay um, another one that I had was that siblings were a blessing in disguise. <laughs> so, like, I hate my two step siblings because they irritate me. But, um, 
I think that they truly were, they're here for a purpose because they uh, helped me. I don't even know what they helped me with besides get me in trouble. But I think in the <laughs> last year, they will help me in my further more years uh, to come, hopefully. If not, it was a waste. You are funny. Um, maybe to share the blame, like having a partner in crime. Remember that story that you wrote last year about shooting, shooting the car or something? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, remember? Yes. Yeah, I remember that because I could just imagine what happened to you guys after that. Cool. Right on. All right. Um, I'm going to jump into another breakout room and then I'm going to end this pretty soon. So just go ahead and talk about um, um, act two for a little bit. Okay. And then we'll finish up here. Hi, are you guys done? Are you guys done with um, sharing out? Yes. Okay, cool. Did you guys get to talk about one of your truths in depth? Yeah. You guys are bad liars. <laughs> okay, we're going to end this. All right. Hello. So let's do this before I forget. Um, go ahead and add memorable quotes at two for the crucible into um, your drive because we're gonna have a quiz on act one and two next week. So if you have your planners nearby, go ahead and write it down as well. We're gonna have a quiz on act one and two on September 14th. Write it big, okay, because I don't, I don't give too many quizzes, so you, you might want to study, okay? Look over the memorable quotes and then the major parts of um, Acts 1 and 2, okay? Um, you also might want to do a quick exercise um, by categorizing, uh, like who's on what side, okay? Um, who's with the law, who's a common person, Okay, um, just so that you can get the characters all situated in your head, okay, because I'm going to ask about specific characters as well, okay, so make sure you know who's who. Remember, nurses are nice, N for nice, P for putnams, putnams are kind of pilau, problems, right, okay, so however you need to um, memorize who's who, that would be the best way. All right, are we ready for this? We're gonna move on to the next part of our course module, okay? And that is going to be our CER revision. So go ahead and click on the CER revision. Um, a number of you guys, um, hmm, what do I wanna say about this? Um, may have missed some of the, I don't know what you wanna call it. Wait, let me forward. A number of you guys did okay on your CER, but what I wanted to do was make sure you guys understood um, what I'm grading. Okay, so um, did you guys pull up your CER from the last um, assignment, the Act 1 CER assignment? So there's major comments that I wrote. Um, if you guys uploaded your draft, um, some things that are missing, first of all, is the MLA format. All right, so everybody, I'm walking you guys through this. I'm going to take some time to walk through this. So if you have to take notes or pay close attention, um, I'm going to start grading you 
extremely heavily on these things that I'm requiring you guys to do for your CER. So today I'm going to take some time to do this with you. Okay, so let's get started. Everybody ready? Yeah. So first things first, the top right hand corner, I need you guys to add in your last name space and then you need to insert a page number. Okay, so if you didn't do that, I probably wrote at the top right hand corner missing the header. Okay, and remember that if you add text into the header, what happens is it, it shows up on each page. So, so there were a couple of you guys that added your heading into the header. So the heading is your name, my name, course name, and then the date. Okay, so look at what look at your format. Um, what I want to specifically point out is that this, okay, in your heading. So your heading, remember, is the lower left-hand corner, right? I'm not lower left-hand corner. Upper left-hand corner, but not it's not in the header. Okay, it's on the page, the first page. So what you have here is you have your name. It needs to be your first and last name. My name, Miss Kabatu. Okay, make sure there's a space between the period and my last name. English, usually you're gonna write English 10, okay? And then your date, okay? Um, your date needs to be corrected as day, month, and then the year. The month needs to be spelled out and capitalized. Okay, everybody clear on that? So what I want you guys to do is update this because you're gonna turn this in as a revision for 10 points. Okay, after today, um, I shouldn't have to go over this, okay, because this is the standard. In fact, when you have an, a CER, what I would encourage you to do is grab your best CER and then copy and paste it so that you have the layout already, okay? Pretty straightforward. I mean, let's work with what we have, right? You want to be smart about it at least, right? Okay, so everybody good with that? Okay, the next thing is your title. The title is never bolded. Okay, so if you got to take notes on this, because if I got to like put in a red comment that says no bold, please capitalize, right? You're going to drive me nuts all year. Okay, so in the title, Lindsay, you back with us? Can you talk? Can you, can, can, can you talk? Mm -hmm. you talk? Yeah! <laughs> okay. So what we're doing is I want you to bring up your CER from last week. We're going over that. Okay. So um, you're going to look at my comments and then I'm at the title part. Okay. So the title first and last word of the title needs to be capitalized. And then all the words in between um, are capitalized unless there are a minor word. So what I'm talking about minor words are like conjunctions for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, is um, small words, okay? But the major words need to be capitalized, especially within the title. So, rule of thumb, first and last word needs to be capitalized in the title, and then the major words within the title, okay? Minor words, no need, okay? Also, do not bold the title. Do not bold the title. Okay, next. Um, as you guys look at this, okay, um, we have, we, you should have had three paragraphs, okay? So let's go back into our module. So I want you guys to have your document for Act 1 CER assignment, split the screen, okay? And then we're going to go into module, um, into this week's modules 1.3 and then go to the CER revision. What I'm gonna do is have you guys open up the link to the three paragraph format. Can you guys get on that? Okay. And then what I'm gonna have you do is make a copy of this because this is what you're going to resubmit. Okay, clear? Okay, and then I want you guys to get into your old CER, and I want you to copy and paste it into your new copy of the three paragraph format. So what I want you guys to do is you make a copy of this three paragraph format document that I just gave you, okay? 
and then copy and paste your your three paragraph CER underneath the outline. Okay, can you guys do that? Okay, and then Kaolapa, can you share your screen after you're done doing that so that everybody can see? Can you give me a thumbs up when you're done? Good? Okay, can you do me a favor and scroll up? Okay, perfect. Go ahead and update the date. Okay, so everybody should be doing just like how Kaolapa is doing, okay? Okay, very good. Um, if you had copied earlier, can you guys go to um, introduction and then introduction A, um, sorry, in the outline, in the outline. Okay, so go ahead and add the word hook. So it should be hook back um, forward slash lead. So those are the two names of, um, what this is in the very beginning of a three paragraph format. Okay. Then go ahead and after the word lead, go ahead and click on that and then hit the return button and add the word bridge. Okay, so yeah, there you go, bridge. And then in parentheses, write TAG for tag. Okay, there we go. Okay, so title, author, and genre. All right, so very good. So everybody should have basically this outline, okay? And then when you scroll down, Kaolapa, just, just a tiny bit, we're gonna update the date. And then we have our, basically what we have is our, um, our initial CER that you submitted. Everybody good? Can I get a thumbs up? Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna deconstruct the three paragraph format. So what I want you guys to do, okay, is this. We are going to copy and paste the parts of our original CER into the, outla into the outline of the three paragraph format. Okay, so go ahead and we're gonna work backwards now. What we're doing is we're checking to see what we're missing, okay? so. Everybody clear on how to do this? We're just copying and pasting. Don't, co don't cut and paste, copy and paste so that we can see what we're missing. Okay, good, just like that. So everybody saw what Kaolapa did. He's looking through his essay, okay? And then he is just copying and pasting the parts. So 
depending on how you worded um, your claim, you could have your tag in your claim, which is just fine. Okay. Um, and then you're just gonna copy and paste that into the claim thesis. And then we just know that the bridge is there. Okay, a lot of you guys forgot to add in the title, author, and genre into your response. Okay, so we're going to have to add that back in today. Okay. The other thing that a number of you guys forgot to do was to add a topic sentence into the body paragraph. Okay, so what we're doing is we're, we're basically becoming real familiar with this easy way to um, organize an essay. Why? Because eventually you're going to have, you know, your three body paragraphs. Eventually you might have like five body paragraphs, right? As an essay essay. This is just a longer response. This is an abbreviated essay. Okay, so you need a topic sentence. So what does that topic sentence sound like, right? We have to talk about how in act um, one, right? Blah, 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 right? So make sure that you have a topic sentence in your body paragraph. So for right now, let's just copy and paste okay, what we have, and then we'll go back and we'll revise. Okay, so what I want to do is set you guys up to see that, you know what, you've, you've done some good things, and then on your own time, you're going to revise and resubmit. Okay, so right now, we're just going to copy and paste into the outline so that you see what you're missing.
Okay, how's it going? You guys good? Are we done? Yes? Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead. Kaolapa is still sharing his screen. So um, what I want you, yeah, can you go? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I want everybody to, to have Kaolapa's screen on one side and um, yours on the other. So you should have broken it up. All right. So I'm just going to go over this real fast. Okay, so the hook in the lead really opens up the essay. Right. You want to you want to even start some kind of hook or lead that that entices the reader. Right. So if you look at Kaolapas, it says Salem, Massachusetts is a town well known in history. Um, that's a really intriguing statement because it's like, oh, yeah, really? What about Hilo? No, just joking. And then it says it is known for the witch trials that took place within it. However, the town should really be known for the sheep that inhabited it. So, um, Kaolapa, can you talk about why you use the word sheep? Um, I decided to use sheep because it's like they had the herd mentality in Salem where everyone was sort of the same. And when a black sheep came up, came along, they kind of like stood out. Very good. Um, sheep can be used in multiple ways, right? As far as the symbolism or the metaphoric sheeple, right? So black sheep, um, sheep in meaning herd mentality. Right? Um, very good. This is the type of hook I'm looking for, especially when you drop something like a metaphor into your hook, because as you, as you go through the essay, okay? And the reason why I'm gonna talk about this right now is because this makes complete sense. So Kaolapa, go down to your conclusion. Okay, so everybody, um, if you need to take notes, this is where your writing becomes much better, right? Your, your hook or your lead is gonna tie into the very end, right? So if you look at B, it's the tie into the lead, right? So it says in the end, a herd mentality, was the downfall of Salem and caused the tragic hysteria that followed, right? Um, very interesting, okay? Um, maybe you can, maybe Kaolapa could um, dive deeper into the symbolism of the sheep, right? Like sheep look like really big animals, but because they have fur to protect them, right? Maybe. You could talk about the fur of the sheep, or maybe you could dive into the term sheeple that people use now, right? And how sheeple is kind of used as like a double-edged sword, right? Like, yeah, you're kind of following, but also it's the connotation, the meaning behind it is, is really a negative connotation, right? Sheeple, oh, they're just being sheeple. Oh, what does that mean? Oh, they're just following blindly, right? Um, that would be a, I would encourage like a deeper type of tie into the lead, okay? All right, go back up to the top. So in your, in your introduction, right, you have this thing called a hook, and then the bridge is basically where you're saying, okay, my hook is going to be um, the link to my claim. That's why it's called a bridge. You're connecting, right? And so you're gonna, it's gonna sound like in the drama, The Crucible by Arthur Miller, right? Um, something about the sheep, right? Or something about there is a definite connection between the herd mentality and the people of Salem. And then the claim for the thesis is a very powerful, but simple statement, right? It's straight and to the point. Some of you guys maybe missed this part as far as um, forgot to use the word hysteria, okay? So if you forgot to use the word hysteria, that means you're, you're, you're just kind of answering the question or you forgot to answer the question. That needs to be stated in the introduction. If you don't state it in the introduction, then you're gonna get a redo because you didn't answer the question in the beginning. Okay, everybody clear on that? Okay, so some of you guys um, answered the question 
in the body paragraph. And that's not where that belongs. It belongs in the introduction. Okay, so um, Kaulakla's claim is in the drama of the Crucible by Arthur Miller. This expectation is ultimately the reason why hysteria took place. So, um, what is that expectation, right? Kaulapa, can you talk about that? What was the expectation that what? Um, that everyone uh, is the same. Okay. So, um, what I would what I would urge Kaulapa to do is to say this expectation of um requiring everyone to be the same is the reason why the stereotype place. so you want you don't want to leave it up to guessing you want to be direct okay so as i'm as i'm going through and revising kaolapas i'm hoping that you guys are saying okay i gotta do that in mind okay or oh i did that in mind sweet or maybe i just gotta word it better okay next let's look um, let's move on to the body paragraph. The body paragraph, we got to open it up with something like in act one, right? There, there is evidence or the characters in act one demonstrate, right? The cause of hysteria, period, boom, right? You're saying, hey, you guys, I'm going to talk about the evidence now. That's all that is, right? So um, if you guys need to just quickly type in a transition like in act one. Okay, just quickly do that so that you have that in there. Okay, so in the topic sentence, you need to say in act one or um, the evidence of, right, of the hysteria, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so dot, dot, dot. Okay. Then what we have here is your evidence and your evidence one, right? So it's a direct quote with the um, the citation, right? So what we have here is the parenthetical notation or citation, right? So Miller, and then you have the page number. Um, because you mentioned Miller in um, in the bridge or in the introduction, you don't need to have Miller in, but that's fine. We're just practicing, okay? Just note. You see, there's no comma. You guys see a comma? There's no comma in the parenthetical notation. Okay, so that's really important. And that you can easily find um, in the link for the Purdue OWL MLA format. Okay, very good. Go down a little bit to the next part. So it's the same pattern, right? After um, your direct quote, you have to have a reason or elaboration as to why the direct quote is important, right? Why it supports the, the claim. Okay, so go ahead, go back, go down a little bit more. So then next is evidence two, right? We have our evidence two, and then we follow it up with a reason. Okay, so same thing. Okay, this is a CER format, but we've just stretched it a little bit more. Okay, um, what we're doing is we're practicing this organization. Why? Because this is the basic. The, the basic foundation of writing an essay. When you guys write your essay, this is the kind of format I should be able to pull out. As far as when I, when I um, look over your essay, I, can, I know in the topic sentence what type of information you're going to be providing in that body paragraph. Okay, everybody clear? Questions? Elise, you have a question? Okay, and then let's go down to the conclusion. The final thought is um, is not just a simple, I'm just gonna restate my, my claim, okay? It has to be a final thought that, that leaves the reader thinking. It is a mic drop. Like, boom, yeah, I said that, now you deal with it. Okay, so let's look. The Crucible by Arthur Miller shows how differences were perceived in Salem. People in the in a town who acted differently from the rest were seen as witches. Yeah. This is where we can use some of um, the vocab um, from the textbook, right? These people were condemned, right? These people were what, right? Okay, so you guys have your textbooks. Go ahead and turn to page um, 1232.
right? Go to page 1232. We have the word um, Komlani, right? False accusations or slander. We have the word um, litigious, right? Lacking moral restraint. We can use some of these words. We can use the word inculcation to, to talk about spreading the slander, right? So I'm urging you guys and pushing you guys to be okay with this first draft, but go ahead and revise it. Add in some membing words. Use these words on page, um, these vocab words from page 1232. So write that down so that you guys can go back to that. Okay. Um, even the word dissembling, I mean, beautiful word. Disguising one's real nature or motives. Ooh, Paris. Reverend Paris. What a sucker, huh? Okay, we good? Okay, thank you, Kaolapa. Um, go ahead and stop sharing your screen. Very good. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do tomorrow is to revise this and then turn it in for another 10 points. Okay, can? Okay. We gotta add in transitions. So in the chat, I gave you guys um, a list of my favorite um, list of transition words. Go ahead and open that up. If you were my student before, then you should have this already starred, okay? So when you're looking at the transition, the smart transition words, okay, I, I'm, I'm not looking for commonly used transition words, okay? I want you guys to challenge yourself and use different transition words, like to say nothing of, not to mention, in light of let's let's bolster what we're trying to do as far as explaining in a more eloquent way okay. all right we good okay let's move on go ahead and get into your um module again okay for this week so let's look let's go to introduction to act three okay, so what I have here is um, the question of how do you win an argument? How many of you guys are professional arguers? Really, Lindsay? Anybody else? Jaden Bettis, are you, a, are you a professional arguer? How many of you guys get your way? Oh, Jaden. Yeah. Makaya, what about you? Are you good at arguing? Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to teach you guys some, um, I don't want to call them like tactics, but they, they really are tactics. Anybody want to be a lawyer? No? Okay. So it says, what happens when you argue with someone who is trying to manipulate you? Have you ever been in an argument and you're just like, dude, that doesn't even make sense. And you're trying to come at me like that. That's what I'm going to be pointing out to you guys today. Because in act three, a whole lot of mess is happening. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you guys about this term called logical fallacy. We know what the word logical means, right? If we have, we have one thing happening and then another thing, right? And then another thing, we can follow the chain of events. Logically, it happens, right? Everything adds up. That's what logical is. Fallacy. Fallacy in meaning fake. Fallacy in meaning it's kind of like a trick. Okay, so it's the idea of an arg or argument that appears to be logical, but the whole premise, the whole base of the, of the, argument is completely inaccurate, okay? So when somebody's arguing with you and they throw in a point and you're like, huh? It's, it's most likely logical fallacy, okay? That thing in you that says, eh, that doesn't make sense. You're being dumb. That's logical fallacy. You can see it on the news all the time. It's crazy, okay? So 
here's a, here's one of the examples attacking the character or reputation of a position's um supporters right guilt by association so example we cannot listen to john's opinion on global warming because he is a tree hugger right um him being a tree hugger has nothing to do with really what's happening in the world. You can hug all the trees you want, but if it's really happening, then it's really happening. Okay, so um, your reading for to this week is um, Act 3. I did give you the video. You, you're going to have to turn it down because they're yelling and it's muffled and it's really hard to hear. Okay, so I'm, I'm just introducing to you guys logical fallacy. Um, hit the next button. Okay, this is where it starts getting crazy because I'm going to be, we're going to focus on a couple of um, logical fallacies. So, so go ahead. Um, you have an Ed Puzzle lesson on logical fallacy. Okay, so you guys get into Ed Puzzle. I've already assigned you um, the lesson on logical fallacy. Um, if you YouTube it too, there's all these little um, videos on logical fallacy. I'm going to tell you guys right now that you need to watch several of these videos because um, some of it's going to get twisted in your head and you need to make sure that um, you understand what it is. Okay, so go ahead. Also, um, you're going to have to take notes. Okay. You're going to have to take notes on logical fallacies. If you guys click on them, um, this 15 logical fallacies link, go ahead and click on that. Okay. And then scoot down. I, I've given you um, a number of logical fallacies to, to kind of go over, like this first one, ad hominem fallacy. Okay. It's when people attack the person and not the argument. Okay, so think about um, an argument you just had with one of your siblings, right? How many times have you been attacked with ad hominem, being personally attacked versus um, arguing about the specific point, right? Here's an example, right? Um, I want to go eat at, um, I want to go eat at Cafe Pesto. Okay, let's just say I, say, I tell that to my sister. I want to go eat at Cafe Pesto. And then she comes back at me and says, why do you want to go eat over there? You're young. You're younger than me. You always get your way. It's like, me being younger and always getting my way has nothing to do with wanting to go eat at Cafe Pesto. Do you understand what I mean? Have you ever heard an ad hominem? Totally, right? Lindsay, what was, what's your go-to? When you attack someone personally, like a brother or sister, what do you say? Um... <laughs> <laughs> to like attack them personally is that what you asked yeah I, oh, we've all uh, used ad hominems <laughs> um, not doing an assignment or like <laughs> not doing her chores that i did oh okay she's right here actually so she can hear me <laughs> oh she can hear you how many of yeah. you guys said told your sibling or whatever oh whatever you're just dumb <laughs> okay oh whatever you're just lazy right that's ad hominem are we good at it we're professionals at that right okay so hey the presidential debates are coming up okay i want you guys i mean we should play bingo with ad hominems okay we had a bingo card of ad hominems and be like, oh, there was the logical fallacy. There was the burden of proof. Okay. So um, this, these um, logical fallacies are pretty cool. I mean, pretty cool because you can kind of point them out, point them out when somebody is trying to argue with you. Okay. So there's a number of videos that you can watch. Okay. The next one, number two, straw man's argument. So go ahead and um, scroll down to the next one. That's number two. 
Okay, so this is a, it's much easier to defeat your opponent's argument when it's made of straw, in meaning it's complete BS. Okay, the straw man's argument is aptly named for the harmless, lifeless scarecrow. In the straw man argument, someone attacks a position the opponent doesn't really hold. So like what? Okay, let's think about it for a moment, right? Um, if I were to say, Toyotas are better trucks than Fords, and somebody else comes at me and says, what? You don't like Fords? You're not American. How dare you claim yourself as a citizen? Why? Because the Ford truck is like, like the Chevy truck, right? It's all about America, right? But Toyota is not an American made car, which they are made in America, but um, they're Japanese based, right? So that would be a straw man's argument. Like you can basically light the argument on fire and nothing will be left because it's complete made out of a bunch of crap, right? Okay, so that's a straw man's argument. Can you think of a straw man's argument in um, the crucible? Type it in there, type it in the chat. What would be a straw man's argument in the crucible? Remember, it's like somebody says, you say something and then that other person is accused of something that's not even true. So who would that be? Please think about it. Go ahead and write it in there. Okay, again, straw man's argument is a cheap and easy way to make one's position look stronger than it is. Using this fallacy, opposing views are characterized as non-starters. Right? They are totally unreliable claims. Right? Like if I were to say, Toyota is, I like Toyotas better than Fords, and somebody says, what? That means you're not American. Right? It has nothing to do with that. I just like Toyota look better than Ford's. Okay, does anybody have one from Act 1? Can anyone think of one? No? Sophia, can you think of one? No? Oh, very good. There it is. Okay, so this is a straw man's fallacy, right? Giles accidentally oops, right? And diarrhea of the mouth about his wife reading books, right? And then people are like, she's a witch? Has nothing to do with that, right? Can't prove that. There's no way, just because you like to read books, right? What was that? That was a form of control, right? In the Puritan religion. If you are, you can read, why aren't you reading the Bible instead of, right? Wasting your time on books. Okay, very good. Anybody else have one? Giles Corey, yeah. Okay, so that would be one. Let's go down to the next one, okay? We have... Appeal to ignorance, sounds pretty straightforward. Okay, let's go to number four. 
false dichotomy or false dilemma. So it says this fallacy has a few other names like the black and white fallacy, the either or fallacy, okay? So what this is is when somebody traps you into an argument and says either this or that, I mean, that's it, right? And as you guys know, in the crucible, it's either, it's an either or fallacy, right? They lock you into saying, Either you're with us or you're against us. Either you're a Puritan and you follow the ways or you're against us, right? Same like the Red Scare, right? If, if you didn't um, criticize communism, you were seen as a sympathizer, right? And if you're seen as a sympathizer, then you're against us. Okay, everybody clear on that? Okay, so um, what I've done is let's go back into the module lesson on logical fallacy what i've done is i've given you a worksheet go ahead and click on the worksheet please okay. so as i click on this worksheet right go ahead go to file make a copy okay you're going to be turning in this worksheet okay um i need you guys to watch the video so okay i need you guys to watch go into ed puzzle and at least watch the video okay and then um, get a hold of what these logical fallacies are like. Okay, so what you're going to do this week um, for Act 3 is um, this logical fallacy as far as um, you're going to, if you go down to the chart, you have five of them to, to identify. So I'm giving you examples. So the first one is the burden of proof. Um, and the burden of proof, okay, is that the accused, um, Can you take out my and put my one out here? Should be must prove their innocence. Okay, that's, you can't prove you're, you're not something. Okay, so it says, how do you know then that you are not a witch? Right, this is Martha Corey. How do you know then you're not a witch, right? And to where Martha Corey responds with, because I know I'm not a witch, right? She can't prove it otherwise. Like somebody, somebody would have to prove that she is, right? So if you look at the explanation, Martha Corey cannot prove she is not a witch. She cannot, she can only prove that she is a good person. The burden of proof rests with the accuser. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah, okay. And then the next one, um, again, going back to the straw man's fallacy, or even hasty generalization. So if you look at number eight, hasty generalization, using insufficient evidence to make a claim, in meaning jumping to conclusions, right? We've all been there. We're like, what? No. Okay, so it says Paris adds, right? So it says, now you have it. So this is in act three. Paris is gonna just throw gasoline on the fire, right? Tr he's trying to nail down, um, John Proctor in Act Three. He's trying to put John Proctor into jail. Why? Because if John Proctor disproves um, Paris, then Paris's life world falls apart, right? And so um, Paris is trying to get him before he 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 gets put in jail. So it says, look, Paris adds the comment to the conversation when Chiva reports that John ripped up the warrant warrant for what right the wife's arrest Paris accused John Proctor of undermining the court because he ripped up the warrant for his wife's arrest just because Proctor ripped up the warrant doesn't mean he intends to undermine the court right so that would be straw man's fallacy or the hasty generalization everybody clear on what you're doing you're looking for the pukas in their arguments okay and there's names for them Right, like the slippery slope. You've heard that one before, number five. Okay, let's look at the slippery slope. What happens if you don't do your homework, right? This will happen, then this will happen, and then this will happen, and then you'll end up in a cardboard box. That's what slippery slope is, right? Okay, so um, as you guys go through, you're going to be watching the video from um, Ed Puzzle, okay? Um, and you're gonna be looking at that, okay? 
Yes, bless you, Sophia. Okay. All right, go back to the module. So make sure you're going to be, um, for Act 3, you're going to be uploading this when you're done. Okay. When you go back into the module, um, that's that. I'm going to be looking also. Okay, next thing. Hmm. Uh, what is this? What did I do? This is not it. Okay, I gotta change the title of this. Hang on. Okay. So what we have here is we have a revision, um, actually an alternative for Act 3. Okay, so you're going to go through this prep work here. Okay. Um, you're going to be re rewriting Act 3, but in like a comic strip form. Okay, what's going to happen when at least one person stands up to, and says, no, you are manipulating the situation. Okay, and that's what you're gonna do. Um, you have to answer some of this prep work here, okay, for act three. What situation or event are you going to be altering? Why did you select this event? Who's involved? And what are the two logical fallacies you're gonna be pointing at, okay? So you're gonna be using this slideshow Okay, so um, I gave you the link below. You're gonna make your own copy and then resubmit this. Okay, come up with a crazy title for Act Three. Okay, and then I gave you guys um, comic strip templates to do this. Okay, questions on this? No. Okay, just a little bit of fun. You can draw. Okay, you can draw and then drop in um, your, your pictures and then the caption should be real simple, okay? The one thing that I want you guys to um, not do, okay, is to use pictures that have already been made, okay? So you might have to draw your own pictures or come up with something, okay, design your own pictures. Where's the link? I don't know, I gotta put it back in there. Hmm. Okay. I will add the link in there. I don't know where it went. Okay. All right, can you guys go to the next thing? Okay, um, I realized that it took a, it's taking a long time to get the memorable quotes done at the beginning of class. So I'm gonna have you do this before you get to class next week. Okay, that's it. Okay, so what we have here is we have Act 3. You have your memorable quotes. Okay, so make sure you do that. You have your worksheet as far as the um, logical fallacies are concerned. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to have you only do three of them. Okay, you hold this up, three. I'm going to change that to three because you just need to get a hold of them. I just, I don't want you guys to use the same ones, okay? So switch that to three. Only three, not five. If you wanna do five, awesome. If you wanna be a lawyer, you go ahead. Okay, but three is the, three is good. Okay, all right. Any questions on what you're doing? You have to redo act three, okay? Just one event from act three that you can do as a comic strip. If you can't draw, what if you can't draw to save your life? Then I wanna see some beautiful stickmen, okay? Use quarters, you can use quarters and like make little circles, yeah? The girls can be pennies, you can just, you know, and then just kind of do your best. In fact, I wanna see beautiful stickmen if you can't draw, okay? No. Not everybody's an artist like Elise, okay? So, okay, we good? Everybody good? 
I've killed everybody with boredom. Awesome. It's possible. Okay. We good, Dylan? You alive? You good? Okay, revive yourself. It's time to go, go and have a break and then get to your next class. Okay, I will be um, around tomorrow. Okay, um, those of you guys who don't have beautiful grades, I'm going to be emailing you. Okay, and then we're going to meet tomorrow. Ken? Okay, all right, take care. Email me. You guys are awesome. Bye. Miss Cobbleton? Yes. Can we change our claim or like our reason? Yeah, for, if you, you some of you guys have crazy claims and need to change it, right? Yeah, that's why we're revising. It's fine. Okay, thank Get, you. Bye. Get bye. Journey. You good? Looks like you're stuck. Kaylee's, yes. <laughs> Yes. Hi. Hi, Liz. So we have to do all of it. What? All of the work, you know, like, so, so you have to draw, and then we also have to, you know, wait. Oh, yeah, edit our stuff. And all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We have to do everything. Yeah. You'll be okay. Um, You'll be okay. About that. Because the editing, editing should be real minimal, right? Unless you did it, like some people forgot to put in evidence. They got to go dig that up, right? But I think that your revision's real minor. Like a lot of it's real minor. It was the kids that like didn't even do it. They're gonna be kind of. Yeah. yeah comic strip so what i did was i i took out like a writing component this week and i put in a comic strip yeah okay okay we'll see you can do it it's fine it's a comic strip you can do it what are, what are you thinking? What are you thinking about? Tell me. It's okay. It's too much work? <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. That's, so what the, I, that, that's what I think. Okay. So act three is, pretty, is a pretty short act. Okay. Especially when you run it through the video and you follow along in the book. Okay. It's pretty short, and we're not we're not grabbing memorable quotes this week. As far as like taking notes on that, what you're doing is you're grabbing logical fallacies, and you're finding only three of them. Yeah, I still don't know what that is. It's like when somebody um, tries to argue a point you're making, and it it's it's complete crap. Okay, so. When you look through the video for Ed Puzzle, that's gonna make a lot of sense. Okay. Is it like when they said that if you don't know like your commandments, then you Yes. Right. That is um exactly what that is. So that would be like um number six. Causal fallacy. Just because you don't do something doesn't mean it caused you to not believe in god does that make sense yeah yeah there you go or like appeal to authority right so like paris is trying to be this like um believe me because i'm the i'm the priest i'm the you know i run the church right so he's appealing to authority right whereas hale is is not trying to do that hale's just trying to get to the bottom of it right yeah, and then there's Danford. Danford comes into the picture, and he's the one assigning the death penalty or being hanged, right? Okay, so he's going to say something crazy. Like, I already assigned people, so I can't go back on that. What is that going to make me look like? And that argument is completely false, right? 
So that would be like maybe slippery slope or even <coughs> ad hominem, which is a personal attack. Okay. All right. I'll message you if I don't get anything. Yeah. Um, give me like an example and say, is this this? And then we can talk about it. Okay. But watch the Ed puzzle video first. Okay. I'll think about, I'll think about the assignments and then I'll see if I need to just take something out. Okay. okay. <laughs> I appreciate you being honest though. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a Bye. great day. You too.